Okay, in this video I'm going to start talking about the hyperbolic functions and just uh, some basic information. So in this video I, what I plan on doing is just definition, uh, uh, show a couple graphs real quick, evaluate a couple of these um, at different values, and then lastly do a couple identities real quick. So hyperbolic sine is defined to be e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Hyperbolic cosine, we just change the negative in the middle to a plus. And then the other um, hyperbolic functions are defined very analogously to the way that we define the regular trig functions. So tangent sine over cosine, well, hyperbolic tangent is just hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. And ditto with the other ones. Um, it's always good to know graphs, so I put three of them up here, um, so I'm not going to do them all, but basically hyperbolic sine, if you graph it, it looks kind of like x to the third power. I mean, obviously it's a different graph, but it has that same general shape. Hyperbolic cosine kind of looks like a parabola that's been moved up a little bit. Again, it's not a parabola. And hyperbolic tangent, if you've seen the graph of inverse tangent, it looks almost like that. Remember, inverse tangent, though, has asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, whereas hyperbolic tangent will have asymptotes at y equals 1 and y equals negative 1, um, horizontal asymptotes. So let's just do a couple problems here real quick. I'm just going to evaluate a couple. Again, nothing real heavy here in this video. So suppose we want to evaluate simply um, hyperbolic sine of 0. Well, again, we have our definition. Um, hyperbolic sine, again, is e to the x. So in this case, x is 0. Um, minus, for the hyperbolic sine, e to the negative 0. And we divide that by 2. Well, on top we'll get e to the 0, which is 1. Again, e to the 0, which is another 1, over 2. And that simply gives us 0 out. <clears throat> so, all right, easy enough. I mean, this is basically, if they ask you to evaluate a hyperbolic function, I mean, this is what you're going to have to do, is just use the equivalent definition and plug it in there. So the same way, hyperbolic cosine, that'll be e to the 0 plus e to the negative 0 over 2. Okay, that's e to the 0. Another e to the 0, which is 1 and 1, over 2. So it says we'll get 2 over 2, or it says hyperbolic cosine of 0 equals 1. Um, <clears throat> you know, if they wanted you to evaluate one of the other ones, again, um, I don't know, I guess we can do one real quick. Suppose they ask you to find hyperbolic um, hyperbolic tangent of 1. Well, we know that's going to be hyperbolic sine of 1 over hyperbolic cosine of 1. And now we just have to use our definitions. So we'll get e to the um, first minus e to the negative first. All of this divided by 2. Um, for hyperbolic cosine, we'll just get e to the first plus e to the negative first, all divided by 2. So a little tedious here. Um, we can simplify by just canceling out the denominators. If you flip and multiply, those will cancel. And now you've just kind of got a tedious problem to solve. So this is e to the first minus 1 over e divided by e to the first plus 1 over e. Um, I mean, obviously you could put this in a calculator. Maybe to simplify it, I would just multiply top and bottom by e. It looks like on top you would get e squared minus 1, and on the bottom we would get e squared plus 1. Again, you could plug this in a calculator, or if it was, you know, a test I was taking without a calculator, I would just leave it like that. So that's the value for hyperbolic tangent of 1. Okay, let's, uh, let's maybe try to justify a couple of um, a couple of identities here real quick. Let's show the following, um, or see if we can't show it. Um, hyperbolic cosine of x plus hyperbolic sine of x. So the question is, does that equal e to the x? 
Okay, so actually, I guess the way it was stated, we actually want to show this, but suppose this is a question. Um, again, to derive these identities, you just start with the definitions. Hyperbolic cosine is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Hyperbolic sine, well, that's e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Um, and again, the question is, we're trying to justify, does that equal e to the x? Typically on these identities, I'll start with the more complicated side, try to simplify it down and see if I don't get the other side. To me, that's the easiest thing to do. I think this one's pretty trivial to show. We've got common denominators, so notice if we add the numerators, we have e to the x and e to the x, which is, well, 2e to the x. We've got e to the negative x minus e to the negative x, so that just cancels out. We have our denominator of a 2. Well, hey, those will cancel out. So, yeah, in fact, pretty pretty straightforward identity to justify. Um, it does look like hyperbolic cosine plus hyperbolic sine just reduces to e to the x. So, okay, pretty, pretty easy. Let's maybe do one uh, kind of harder. <clears throat> so let's see if we can't show this. Let's see um, if we can show hyperbolic sine of 2x. We want to show that equals 2 times hyperbolic of sine x, hyperbolic cosine x. Um, and if you remember one of your old trig identities, um, it says sine of 2x equals um, 2 sine x, cosine x. Okay, so notice the similarities between the old trig identity and this new hyperbolic identity. Um, you have to be careful, though. Definitely don't fall into the trap of saying, you know, now, based on this one example, well, I guess every trig identity somehow turns into a, a hyperbolic identity, um, and because that's not true. Um, however, there are lots of similarities um, between these hyperbolic identities and the regular trig identities. I think it's kind of interesting. Okay, so we're trying to show that hyperbolic sine of 2x, okay, well, that means we're, we have to show does e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x over 2, that would be hyperbolic sine of 2x, does that equal 2 times um, e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 times e to the x plus e to the negative x? over 2. That's what we're trying to justify here in this case. So, again, you could start with the left side and try to bust it up and make it look like the right. Um, I'm going to work on the right-hand side and see if I can't make it look like the left-hand side. So, the first thing I'm going to do here is just, um, you know, I could immediately cancel out some twos. I'm not going to just yet. I'm going to foil out this stuff inside. So, my two, he's just chilling out front. If I multiply everything inside of the brackets, um, let's see what we get. It looks like I'm going to get a denominator of 2 times 2, or just 4. And then I just have to distribute this out. e to the x times e to the x. Again, I have like bases, so add the exponents. So I'll get e to the 2x. Let me write that a little better. On the outside, um, e to the x times e to the negative x. Again, if I add the exponents, that's going to give me e to the 0. Um, likewise, on the inside, when I distribute, I'm going to get a negative e to the 0. Um, e to the negative x times e to the negative x. Um, I have a positive and a negative, so I'm going to get e to the negative, excuse me, negative e to the, if I add the exponents, negative x and negative x is negative 2x. Okay, um, again, I basically have these things in the middle. I, again, e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, so I have plus 1, minus 1. So the e's in the middle will just cancel out. Okay, so let me, I'm going to stick everything a little closer now. Minus e to the negative 2x. Well, hey, I think maybe I will go ahead and cancel here now. 2 over 4 is going to reduce, that'll cancel out to my 2 in the denominator, and hey, lo and behold, that's what I wanted to um, come up with, because again, e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x over 2, that is hyperbolic sine of 2x. So we've now um, justified our identity. So, all right, so just a few basic things in this video. Again, I'm going to do a couple others involving derivatives and integration as well, so feel free to stick around and look for those if you need it.